case you didn't know, you didn't come yesterday, my name is Danny. I'm known to many of you in the community as Eat Them 101. How are you? We got a great, great panel. We got a whole bunch of great panels today. This panel is about Goku and his family, and we've got Goku and his family here with us. Y'all ready to meet Goku and his family? I'm bringing them out one at a time. First, we're going to introduce the youngest member of Goku's family. Well, one of, one of the youngest. I can't say the youngest, but this actress plays both the youngest member of Goku and Chi Chi's union, as well as the mother of the real youngest member, Pan. Please welcome, well, no, she doesn't, you know, Videl, excuse me. She plays Videl. They have Pan, but whatever. Please welcome Kara Edwards. Cynthia Kranz. No introduction. No introduction. Right? For almost 20 years, he has provided his voice, his vocal talents, to play our main character of Goku. He has a. Everybody here, everybody. 
please. There we go. Sorry. Sorry, dude. I just long intro for a 30-minute panel. I'm like, it's all right. It's all right. Um, hi. Uh, I'm gonna let, let's start at the end here, though, with my son, okay. Kara. It's Kara. Wait, is it working? Yes, you're working. Kara Edwards plays my son. By the way, Kyle is uh, indisposed at the moment. He's uh, feeling a little not great, so he's uh, taking a little break. He'll make join us here shortly. My son, Kyle, and my other son, Colleen, and my other son, Goten, and then my wife. Yeah, I feel like sit on your lap or something. Yeah, that's why I'm sitting between us. It's like, hi, Gigi, hi. That would be a photo op. Or ask for an allowance. What's that? Allowance. Allowance. Oh, yeah, hang on. Uh, how many zinni do we get? A, I don't know. Goku doesn't have money. Wait, what am I talking about? He doesn't understand money. What are we doing here? All right, so uh, are we doing, do you have a long format or what are we doing? Are we just taking, what are we doing? I'll ask some questions, then they will. Oh, okay, great, great. Well, you all know who we are. We're happy to be here. There's so many people in the audience. This is exciting, right, ladies? Yeah, this is huge. This is great. Thank you. Splitting our focus between all the different brands that we do, and this is just straight up Dragon Ball Z. That's true. And we normally have panels this big for like yeah, lots of other things. Uh, if we're on with other actors from other shows, and this is just you're right for Z. That's amazing. You just said that. What am I thinking? <laughs> Back up verification. <laughs> Well, answer questions. Oh, you're really well. Are you doing questions first? What are we doing? I got you. I got all right. You ready? All right. First of all, how does it feel to voice Goku for almost 20 years? <laughs> Goku or all our characters? Me, myself? Oh, is that a question for me or everyone? That's everyone. For me, it's uh, tiring, uh, but awesome. Uh, I consider it my life's work, and I'm very proud of it. And uh, uh, I, I'm thrilled to have made all the, the friends and, and family uh, that I have made over the years. It's been a really... I've been married to you longer than my real husband. I... <laughs> And I've been married more times than Goku. Um, you know, <laughs> I know I had to pull out a joke from somewhere, but that's a fact. Um, <laughs> so, how do you relate to Goku in his role of the lighthearted father figure? How do I relate? Yes. Well, first of all, I'm not lighthearted unless I'm having fun, um, and I think it's a great, uh, you know, a great. Uh, <laughs> Uh, an archetype, I think, for people to follow. Uh, I would probably be a terrible father. That's probably why I don't have children. Um, but I know you have a child, and, and, and you know we don't have children. They have children. And do you feel a lighthearted approach? Is a, I don't want the questions to be all Goku related. So uh, okay. Oh, it starts with me. Okay. Uh, all right. Cool. So. Uh, yes, it's a good approach. He should probably show up more and not leave his child in the forest with a green man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know. But, you know, that's, it's cartoons, you know. <laughs> do you, wait, do you enjoy the same jokes as Goku? Like, do you have the same sense of humor? I, I have a very King Kai sense of humor, uh, and I, I, there are a lot of jokes that uh, Goku does. I, I have a pretty cheesy sense of humor, um, and, and I'm a bit of a surrealist, but yeah. Uh, Can you do a Costan George Costanza as Goku? I did that recently for Rob Paulson's uh, podcast. Which was awesome. Yeah, well, yeah, he's great. It, yeah, he's but, amazing. Uh, I would love to. Can you give us one George one? I, what, what did he? What, what's a classic George? I'm trying to think. You know, Mandalay Industries, Mandalay Industries, Mandalay Industries. <laughs> Remember when they answer the phone and it's, he has to lie and say it's Mandalay Industries? Yes. That's the only line I can remember from George. Oh. Is the Mandalay industry. I know. thought that was so random and cool. I haven't gotten to see it, but I saw that it happened. Yeah, it was a very fun podcast. Rob Paulson uh, is a legend, and I I, uh, I was studying his voice before I was a voice actor. Like, I, I would go home after college and watch uh, Pinky and the Brain, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, he's a legend. I, that guy one, probably the nicest guy I'll ever meet. I mean, the guy is just a, a, a genuine, uh, kind person, regardless, no matter what day it is. He's amazing. Can't say enough good words about him. Uh, as far as me, I'm lighthearted, yes, good. Next question, boom. Woo Next Sorry, question. I'm, I'm still waking up. <laughs> this question's for all of you. We're gonna oh, start with Sean, then move down. Which characters that you've played in any franchise or series do you think relates the most with the ones you play in Dragon Ball? <laughs> Or at least we'll get along with them the best. Well, I mean, you know, it's an obvious choice is uh, uh, Kappa Mikey. I played Gonard, and I was cast in that show because of Goku. They wanted a parody of Goku, um, and they wanted a par they wanted to parody uh, the whole genre of anime. And so the on-show Gonard is kind of a mixture of a kind of a pickle of Vegeta thing, and then Gonard off-show was like, what if 
what if Goku had no powers and was just kind of a, a dipshit who hung out with him? He was an actor, you know, like, because Gonard's an actor on this show, he's just a, a creature actor. So that would be the closest uh, that I can think of that relates to Goku. What about you, Colleen? Uh, I mean, I feel like that's an easy answer for me, too, because Luffy and Gohan... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give it up. Get along. Uh, the only thing is, they can never appear together because then I would have to voice both of them, and that would be bad for all of you and for me. Uh, I would never be able to speak again. But it's—I uh, I, think—I think they they would get along just because all they want is fun. That is the whole point of life: is is fun and friends and family. Yeah. Protect and then and stretch. Eat some meat later. Yeah. <laughs> be stretchy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's very important. I just this love is that. really yeah. hard for me because Chi Chi doesn't really get along with anybody. <laughs> um, I think Botan would get along with her because she's sweet, but I, don't, I think Chi Chi wouldn't like Botan very much. <laughs> and Mitzi's just so straight up weird. I just I can't even see them in the same room. So I don't know. I don't know. Nobody. I'm gonna stick with nobody. <laughs> Stick with the character type. Um, I'm gonna actually put Goten with a, this is kind of a lesser known character named Teddy from a show called Last Exile, um, and only because he's literally the British Goten. Uh, I actually can really only voice one boy character, and if you listen to any of my male characters, they're all just Goten, um, with like slight changes. Uh, and, and Teddy, I remember, is directed by an actor, Chris Bevins, and he was like, Okay, so what I want for this is I want it to be Goten, except for he's British. <laughs> Sweet. So All my little boys are Mitch. They would, I'd be like, don't you want something different? They're Mitch from uh, Detective Conan. Yeah. They're, they're, I'm Woo! same voice for all the guys I play. Yeah. Same and way. I thought they wanted different. They're like, no, we want Mitch. I'm like, okay. No, that's what you do. Like, it's like the, it's it's literally, you know, a lower pitch Goten, a higher pitch Goten, an accented Goten. Sometimes it's Goten with an attitude. Sometimes, sometimes my females are also Goten. There's a character in Battleborn, they're like, that's just Goten, guys. It's just, it's just Goten. It's all good. Karen. Do you agree or disagree with Goku and Chi Chi's parenting methods? No. <laughs> 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 As a proud helicopter parent, I do not agree because that child has entirely too much freedom and why is he always hanging out with that derelict child trunks? I, I highly disagree with the lack of parenting In taking In my place. defense, I'm trying to parent, but it's his fault for taking the kids And have you read the articles? You're I'm not like supposed to be streaming your children like that anymore. I would, want to, I would not want to parent Goten. I'll say that. I would not want to parent Goten. No. Like, although I would much rather parent Goten than Trunks. Between yes. the two of them. So, because at least Goten's cute. Trunks, you're just like, you're you're awful to parent and you're rude. I don't think Goten <laughs> realizes he's a parent, uh, really. I think these kids just showed up one day and he likes to hang out with them sometimes. <laughs> as long as they're willing to fight. Yes. You know, like, that's... Worst dad ever! Yeah. Like, the most absolute I don't know why you keep ever. calling me dad, but if that's what you want to call me, that's okay. <laughs> Um, like it's... I mean, no, this is hyperbole. People get on the web and they're no, like... No, but it's you're not the greatest husband either. Um, oh, yeah. I see him what I've seen him what tw How many kids do we have? That's how often I they see They have him. had sex twice. <laughs> Why do you think she's so pissed off all the time? She's That's sexually right. frustrated. She's sexually frustrated. She probably stole the second one, so to speak, in the night when Goku was sleeping. She totally raped you. I raped this you. This panel just went R rated. I was uh, gonna say, let's just, uh, can you imagine that we, like, 20, 20 here, years we? ago, could you have ever pictured us sitting here? Like, 20 years ago, they just said, did you realize in 20 years you guys are gonna sit around and argue, like, whether or not these are good parents, if they're a good husband? No. And if they're like, back then, we so would not have, we were just like, what? Now we're like, more no, at the end, end of the show, one. so many times. Like, wow. I've grieved it, so this is a dream. I just wondered if that should be in a job description. You know, just, that's what I was thinking. I was like, so what do you do? Well, I, I go to panels and I talk about whether a character I play is a good father or not um, with my co-stars. Uh, that's what happens, yes. That's I think what... things 
get too real. Can we just make it so real? It's like, no, guys, it, it's still a fun show. <laughs> so that's a good question. <laughs> well, I got a better one for you because this one I've been wondering for about 15 years. Mm. So if Goku's best friend is the richest woman on earth, why? Because the family have money problems. Goku <laughs> does not understand money. I mean, that's an obvious answer. He was trying to keep track of how many zenny he got, and they gave it to Chi Chi. She spent it on like private school education or some shit. I don't know. Excuse me, I wanted them to have an education. I wish that there was a. Goku wouldn't take charity. No, he wouldn't. No, he, he would just, you know, <laughs> we can fly our problems away or fight them away or something or just blast them. Eat them away. I wonder if there's a sub cartoon where like Gohan, because I, I read an interview with Kira Toyama recently that Gohan is not just you know nervous about fighting; he is reluctant because he doesn't want to be a fighter right. at all. So I wonder if there's like a cartoon where Chi Chi and Gohan, you know, Gohan's a teenager, maybe college years, and they just sit around and bitch about Goku. Like they're just like, kind of no, it's fight this, fight that, and it's martial arts. He always wears the same outfit all the time. And, can't even under, like they just bitch, and but then when it shows up, they act nice. Just therapy. Yeah, yeah it's just it's a therapy just session. session. Yeah. Family therapy. That's that would be awesome. <laughs> that, was that the answer question? I don't remember the question was. This is the easiest panel of my life. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. If the four of you were stuck in a house for real for a week. Oh <laughs> God, I'm out. Us, not our characters, but us. You guys. Yes. Okay. Who would take charge? What might, what might that Colleen. look like? Colleen! Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be for the best. I was going to say, but we would want that. Yeah, probably. That, that's not yes. a bad thing. We I, would I want don't know that that would be a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it would just things would get done. It would be perfect, actually. Yeah. I would love to go and stay at her house for a week. Oh, you're right. I think that's what would go on. Yeah. She'd be like the therapist. Like she'd be the one we were all going to that are like we would be eating healthy and <laughs> we'd be learning things. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the eating healthy part, but we would all learn. We'd be reading books. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just made that up. We'd we're gonna play chess. You'd have to deal with my incessant French horn playing. Uh, are we doing like like superlatives? Like, are we are we picking who? Okay, if if I'm gonna be the one who's running things, then what do you do? Uh, I eat and play video games. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. What do you do? I do good chores. I'm a good cleaner. Okay. I like to be your maintenance, your household maintenance. Yes. Okay. I overanalyze everything that you guys are doing. <laughs> you don't handle the Wi Fi. You're not wifi. invited to my house. <laughs> Sean. Yeah. Alright, so if Zamasu switched bodies with Goku, which he did, and then decided, you know what, instead of murdering his wife and son in cold blood, he said, I'm gonna adopt them. What, <laughs> so what might Goku Black as a father sound like or do? Oh gosh, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> You know, because he would think, I mean, that's, you're kind of breaking the, the, the rules of the, the canon, because he would think they were vermin and want to destroy them, you know? Uh, that's not for some reason. The DNA would be inferior to his, he'd want to watch them die! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or something like that. I'm trying to channel the voice. I, I hadn't done it in a while because I was working on another episode yesterday. But, and I'm sorry I wasn't here. I actually was, that was a really legit picture. I was actually at the studio recording. So I had a good excuse to miss a comment. Be the character I'm actually here to talk about. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can effectively answer that question I, uh, in a way that, other than just you know, uh, I don't know. We'd have to create better circumstances for them to, to have that scenario to begin with, because he just want to kill them immediately. Unless, well, we didn't explore the idea of the potentiality of that character having ha already had children from that parallel universe, yeah. like an evil Gohan and an evil Goten who also want to destroy all the vermin. That would be awesome. That well would then be at interesting. some point he had to parent them. Yes, at some point he would have to parent them, as uh, Colleen boxes me in here. Uh, uh, yes. Clean your room! <laughs> I don't know, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to think what mean things they say, you know. Your homework is terrible! I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Next question, hopefully. <laughs> No, that's all I wish I had a better answer. I need more water. Uh, <laughs> I got more down here if you want. You're good? Okay. Take it, Kyle. Um, can you tell us what episode? It's okay. What episode did you record yesterday? Are you allowed to say? Uh, yeah, I was working on the. Yeah, I can say. I think we were working on the. Uh, uh, I was working on the baseball episode. <laughs> which, my favorite episode, which was hilarious. 
And it is hilarious. My husband is a baseball fanatic, and so I have to watch the Rangers all the live long day. So this episode was especially funny for me. I told you about it. Remember? That's awesome. You did. I do remember. You're going to have a good time with that one. <laughs> no, right. this is a great episode. We're going to line up some people to do some VIPs to do some quick questions here. Um, the microphone's right there in the center, so if you're a VIP, go ahead and line up, and you can ask whatever you like. For those of you who are Next Generation fans, I feel like that episode when you have a big part like, There are four lights! Four lights! Um, for those of you who are... There's no microphone. Sorry, it's a deep talk. Microphone's right in the center over there. Yeah. There's no mic in it. There's no mic! There's no mic. There's no mic. Well, I'm gonna mic here. I would give you this. Oh, give him, yeah, give him that one. Just have someone holding it. Don't hand a person a mic. Trust me, it's a big mistake. I want some good, thought-provoking questions. No. Okay. no. My favorite play of the pudding is pistachio. Simple ones that I've answered before that I have an answer already for. No, we get a thought-provoking question. Sure. You're in second. <laughs> Are y'all having a good time so far? Can I just say, you ask the best questions. Like, I think of any, like the most thought out, interesting questions. So I think you Thank you, that means a lot. Uh, we probably do a ton of these. See, I'm analyzing. That's why that's my job in the house. He's a great interviewer. I got to do one of his podcasts. No, YouTube interviews. It's all, it's all the same thing. Yeah. He's so good. He's so good. Geek them one-on-one on YouTube. <laughs> Sean's actually the most requested guest, so requested guest. Everybody wants me to talk to you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Everybody wants me to talk to you. <laughs> Y'all ready? Yeah. I don't think the mic is on. Oh, it's green. Yeah, I don't know if the mic's... Okay, it is on. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that. Have at uh, This question is for Cynthia. Uh, we met yesterday. My name's Sarai. Anyway. Hi. I just have a... Yes. Uh, just a quick question for you, because I know in the fandom a lot of people are like, Oh, Chi Chi's the worst, she's always telling Gohan to study, so I'm going uh, for this four-year-old to go and fight this, uh, this world-ending monster. Yes. But anyway, I just want to know, like, is that your favorite part, like, to be the tiger mom, the strong, always yelling, or do you like to play it more subdued, like in the Boo Saga, Chi Chi's a little bit more chill? I like being the crazy, loud, <laughs> yelling, aggressive mom. I do. I love I love that. But it, what I really like is that in one take, she can go from crying to laughing to yelling and then to just being sweet. And all of like, she takes bipolar to a whole new level. My thoughts exactly. All right, thank you. That's very good. I love it. All right, thank you. You're my favorite guy. Oh, thank by the way. you. Oh, we still love her. Next up, a uh, question for Gigi. Yes. Who would win in a fight between you and Mr. Satan? <laughs> <laughs> totally me. Are you ready? Yeah! <laughs> Did you not see the one where, where they're tossing my grandchild around and I scare him to death? <laughs> yeah. Alright, and so this one's kind of for all of you. Uh, I, rec I recently saw in the dub that Goku kind of doubled down on the statement that he never kissed Gigi. I was wondering. That made me yeah, it was a lot controversial. That got me so heated, bro. <laughs> that was in the script. I mean, that's. That, we checked the Japanese script. Do we also. Never, they it never kissed Japanese. ever? I, well, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if... He acts like he doesn't know what it... Yeah, he wouldn't yeah, mean I, I, I don't think Kevin knows where babies script. come from. She totally had to trick him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she drugged him. She probably <laughs> drugged him. What? She's talking about how she can feel about it. She calls me to... Oh, I shouldn't say that. Oh. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Too soon? Too soon? Too soon, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. She would do that, though. She, you know, I don't know. I I don't remember any part of Dragon Ball or 
or but Dragon Ball Z. Why would he want to kiss her? I don't think it's married she, in the Dragon Ball. Why would he want to kiss her? She's a nag. <laughs> she, she is best wife. She just wow. she she want to kiss him. Oh. He, he doesn't. Yeah. Well, he's kind of hot. She's not very pretty. <laughs> and she's, oh, she's not. <laughs> I mean, I love her, but beauty is. She doesn't even have the inner beauty. Like, why would he want to kiss her? Inner beauty. <laughs> That, that line was in the Japanese version too, that's not just a random change, and uh, yeah, a lot of people were mad about it. <laughs> I enjoyed the scene and delivering the line, I thought it was very humorous. Do I get to hear it ever? What's that? It actually it aired. I think it aired like two It aired, yeah, it aired. Last week, but last was my character in that scene? Not in the scene, no. Okay. They're in the future, you know, underground. And they're talking about why we've never kissed, or that we've never kissed? Well, well what's the scene? In reference to... Trump's 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 yeah. I was yeah. Oh, okay. And, 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 and then Vegeta's like, you never kissed your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but you have two children. <laughs> Come on, bro. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? The folks in the world understand the Jesus. things that happen in the universe they've created. I think they get it as well. That's... I mean, that feels like an inside joke. That feels like them going... Well, yeah. Going. Plus, I mean, they do it again with the whole Yamcha thing in the baseball episode, for those who've seen it. Because they know how, you know, Yamcha is the Meg of, you know, the family guy of, uh, of Dragon Ball. They know this, and so they did the whole... Yet he still... For, I mean, who hasn't seen the baseball episode? Who has not seen the baseball episode? Okay, good. So at the end, he's touching the base, and, uh, and uh, Yamcha wins anyway. So. What's that? When does it record? Yeah. When does that one air? Uh, I just recorded my part yesterday, so okay. I don't know. It's, okay, okay. Most parts were in when I recorded. Most. I it's don't, hysterical. I don't think it's, Vegeta was in, but everybody else was in. It's I also like the, pow the power farming is hilarious too. When you guys are doing the cabbage. Oh yeah, I love that. I, I love. I love, love, you, I love all the weird, part. subtle aspects of it. Like I love bubbles. I love Gregory. I love anything that's not fighting and powering up. Even though I like that, but I mean, I love all the little nuggets. Yeah, I, too. I totally you know? understand. That's how the wonders are the best. Like you guys love the big fights, and we love the little silly moments. I love yeah. Like a raw and melon. Like, I think that's why Super's my favorite because it gives you just enough fighting and just enough comedy from Dragon. It's the best of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z stuff. Oh, great on that. baseball episode because I'm like, oh good, here I am again, sitting on the sidelines, oh, cheering on my man. Everyone from that episode though, everyone, I love it, my favorite episode. episode. No, it's super fun. Hello, this is a question for Sean. Hey Sean, so during the tournament uh, where Goku was fighting Hit, Goku states that Hit can jump one-tenth of a second in... Uh, you realize this is going to turn into a writer question, but I'm going to listen. Okay. <laughs> I, know, I, I know Goku's illiterate, and he can't do math, so how can he calculate? Oh yeah, that thought crossed my mind as well. <laughs> and we checked the script, and it was there, so I'm like, okay. Sometimes I wonder if Goku's just gaslighting everyone. Because I first got, a, I first got, like, he's really not an idiot. And I first got a glimpse of this when he knew that Go he really kept the whole secret uh, with Gohan being powerful enough to defeat Cell. Yeah. He played everybody. He played the long game on that exactly. so expertly. I'm like, is Goku really secretly a giant asshole and is just gaslighting <laughs> everyone so he can fight the strongest all the time? And is fine at math, can hold down a job, is a good dad, but just doesn't want to be I love because that. he's a sociopath. Like, He just hates Chi Chi and wants to torture her. I don't know. I am now incorporating that into my Chi Chi. It's just going to make her madder. Yeah. I know. It's just, I That's know why Chi Chi's so angry. This. She knows. She suspects he's, she's gaslighting. She knows. She's, no! She's, it's like Yosemite Sam. You know? Ooh, that Goku! He's gaslighting me again! Thanks, guys. Very I have a question before we move on to All right. for the audience here. How excited are you to hear Sean? Portray Goku in Ultra Instinct. <laughs> Thank you. I'm terrified. Most powerful form ever. Yeah, you know, we're definitely gonna. Uh, there's gonna be some, uh, definitely some blood on the mic when I'm done. Um, <laughs> But I'm looking forward to it. I've only seen a snippet of it. I try to stay in the dark a bit, uh, so my character, because my character, I'm only in the character where he's at, so he can't know 
uh, the future, like Trunks gets to. Uh, so I try to keep it, you know, every once in a while I'll jump ahead and look here and there. Someone will show me, you gotta see this. I'm like, I didn't want to see that yet. Um, so that I, it stays fresh. But I'm excited for the end and, uh, and the Ultra Instinct business. Uh, I did see Taste the rainbow of Kamehameha! Yes. There's, there's gotta be some kind of Skittles reference in there somewhere, meme. Someone, in the two seconds on my Twitter, someone will have drawn a picture of this with Goku Kamehameha and Taste the Rainbow. Like, literally, I'll see it in just a second. It's amazing how fast shit happens nowadays. Anyway, I digress. Skittles is as cool as, like, Arby's than they actually make it a commercial. Arby's will, will quote, but they will tweet me and quote Dragon Ball sometimes, and they, they have a Dragon Ball fan working in marketing at Arby's, because I see those things. Yeah. 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 Oh, they do? They yeah. do my hero? Yeah. That's awesome. That is so awesome. We're becoming a giant brain with this internet. I'm gonna get all meta on you. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's all coming together. Okay, so, um, you know, pick up fighters, you know, Fighter Z. Um, I fighters. really love the, uh, <laughs> I really love the, uh, the commentary that, um, you know, characters like 18 and, and Gigi got. You know, I was um, really impressed with, of course, all the, the voice acting, but, um, I guess one comment I have is I love how uh, when Gohan wins uh, a match, it's just like, Dad, I did. It like, sounds just like Keanu Reeves for a second. So that's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Gohan just because of that. But uh, I guess I guess for a open up discussion, be like, what was the uh, recording for fighters like for for each of you? That always goes so fast. Yeah. Know? Like it's so it's lightning fast. You come in like I, I'm literally done in 15 minutes. Uh, and it's just line, 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 line. It's not like a series where, so you don't get to see what's happening around you. I frequently have no idea what the move is that I'm recording for. Um, to put that in perspective, we do about 30 to 40 cues an hour on the show. We'll do 100 cues an hour on a game because we're not having a match picture. So it's just, she's right. She says she's in 15 minutes. I'm usually, for, it depends on the character. Sometimes you have a bigger volley, but sometimes I'm there for several days, uh, depending on, you know, it's, it, games take me anywhere from 10, 14 hours to record. Uh, depending on the line counts. More to do. I have more to do because yeah. you know, and Chris has a ton to do because he's so many voices and, and Vegeta also. So he's always got a ton to do. But yeah, it, it, the video games are not as the only time video games are really, in my opinion, fun to work on is when you've got a mocap situation and you're acting scenes with other actors. But prelay uh, animation and dubbing is to me more enjoyable than uh, than a video game because you everything's out of context. You have to ask a lot of questions. You have very little direction. It, it's it's very more. It's scripted in a in a uh, Excel spreadsheet. Like it's yeah. it's very they're, they're, you know they're trying to keep things organized. Uh, I like not having to flat match, and it yeah. pays yes. very much better. It does pay so much better. <laughs> yes. I really like video game recording, but I feel like the Dragon Ball Z video game recording is completely different than normal video game recording. Um, See, yes, I would agree. Also, yes. And there's also timing. This is a, so I have a story from Fighters. Is a, when I was voicing Gotenks, I actually yeah. had pneumonia that day, and um, I, as I was voicing it, and I didn't realize at that point that I had pneumonia. I just knew I was very sick, and so uh, I was voicing with the director, and, and there was someone there to help with the lines, you know, rewriting lines and stuff. And uh, I kept coughing because to to do Gotenks, like he's he's Goten, but he's Trunks, and so I have to take on a much more uh, it's much louder and bigger, and I throw my arms around a lot. And um, I, I cannot say anything Gotenks unless I end it like that. <laughs> and so uh, I was in there, I was coughing, and I actually, the next day, I was like, I, at one point in the middle of the session, I'm up against the back of the booth, and I'm like, guys, I know this is going to sound insane, but I'm pretty sure I just broke a rib. And now I dislocated two of them during fighters. So you, I was in the booth fighting it out while I was recording the game. I got dislocated ribs off of that game. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ever think we're phoning anything in, you do not phone this in. We take it all the way. I broke my ribs, y'all. <laughs> and got paid nothing in addition. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody my doctor's like, like, here's, here's some workers, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so while we're on the topic of Dragon Fighters, um, I don't know about any of you guys, but I need all my friends that are on TV. Watching on Twitch, you and Chris David fighting, are we ever going to get to see a rematch between the two of y'all? What's that? Are we ever going to get to see a rematch between we, you we, guys? I know that Funimation and, and uh, Evo had reached out to us, and I don't know who's talking with them at Funimation, but Chris and I's goal, what we'd like, 
is to do a rematch at Evo. Um, I have since subsequently got my copy from my accountant, which was not a lie. Uh, I did get uh, my, my copy did go to my account, and I have been practicing a bit. I will be setting up a Twitch channel in in, in, in the coming weeks to uh, uh, chronicle my training. But the goal is for me to chronicle training and my fight moves, and then secretly be doing another set of moves that I don't publicly show that Chris can't see, so that I can meet him. But I will be practicing uh, on a Twitch channel in the near future. I just haven't got it all set up yet, but. Currently accepting bribes to disable his controller. Oh yeah. Just, yes. Uh, I like that idea. I mean, I don't know. What's wrong with my controller? To put under the table. Uh, hi. This question is from Ms. Edward. Why did you change the voice of Goten in Super? Okay, I'm so glad you asked this question. So I got an incredible amount of hate mail uh, when Super came out because I did change the voice of Goten. And just so you guys know, I did not, like, this was really thought out. Um, there were several reasons. First of all, if you look at how they drew Goten in Super, they drew him younger. I get that he's older. They drew him younger and they put him in a onesie. Uh, he is a full head shorter than Trunks. And everything, like, they even wrote him younger. Like, his dialogue became younger. Um, Trunks is the one in the lead, and so Goten's the one just kind of like, Yeah, that sounds like a great idea! And so he's just, like, happy no matter what he's doing. I think and it's the cutest thing ever. Thank you! Well, so, and, and then I'll tell you the number one reason, I'll be honest, is I had a child. Uh, I had a little boy. I actually was pregnant when we were recording Battle of Gods and Fidel announces that she's with child. Um, I was pregnant during that time. And so, I'm a solo parent, so it's just like me and little, little, little dude who's almost three years old. And he, I swear my child is, is he, he does things that are so Goten-like that I was like, when we started doing Super, I, I now channel him. And so a lot of times I rewrite the scripts to like, there are things that my son says, um, just because I'm like, to me, Goten is the little boy now that he should have been all along. So I'm real, like I, I put a lot of pride into it. Like it wasn't something I'm just like, oh, and vocally too, just so you guys know, the way I used to do that was wrecking me. And so, like, I do this full time for a living, and I was like, you know, if I raise this pitch ever so slightly, then I won't have laryngitis five times a year. Um, but it also just, but it was more about just, I wanted him to, in context with Super, I wanted him to make sense with what was going on. But then I just recorded an episode recently where all of a sudden he's like, I'm not a little kid, don't treat me like a baby. And I'm like, oh crap, because I've totally been voicing you like a baby. <laughs> Don't do that to me, man. Um, but yeah, so that's why I, I just, I, I love him so much and, and I see my son when I'm voicing him, so that's why. Thank you. Thank you for asking that, because I love being able to like say it to a large group of people so that I don't get as much hate mail. <laughs> we have time for one, maybe two more, so I think I'm good. All right. First off, I want to say uh, thank you guys for doing everything that y'all do. Yes. Like, what do y'all think when you're coming back to do the movies and the super? Were y'all excited? Or oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> no, I was so excited. It was like being cast all over again because I just thought it was over and done. Well, so did we. That's why. Right. So <laughs> this just this doesn't happen. Like you guys don't understand. Like when we do this all, like this is what we do for a living, and it doesn't happen. Ever that you I get to just never keep had a role coming back? For Nineteen years. Yeah, like you keep get to keep never. coming back and exploring the character and taking them to new places, and so it, it starts to become such a huge part of your heart. Like um, you take so much more ownership. Whereas, like I'm not saying you don't take ownership over other roles, but if you just get to go in and kind of be this two dimensional thing, um, all of a sudden for us, I think this has all become very three dimensional. And you know, you get to meet more fans and more people come in, and we have this whole new set of you know, younger fans. New generation. Yeah. That, and that's eye-opening when people are like, I grew up on you and now my children. And I'm like, am I 80? <laughs> like, my kid was here yesterday and he's walking in and identifying the characters. And I'm like, I could have never dreamed 20 years ago that I would be now seeing this through his eyes. And it's like, I get really, like, we're just so proud. We are so proud and excited that we get to keep doing this. And we hope it goes on. Well. <laughs> 
many of us here will have spent half our lives on these characters very soon. Yeah. Uh, depending on your age, but I'm close. Uh, you're I'm close. There. You're there. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a big deal, you know. I. It's funny. Uh, I have a classical music background, and a lot of times when you become a classical music musician, you d donate your whole life to an instrument. And I did that for about 20 years, but I've donated more of my life and more of my time to this instrument. And like I like to say, I'm a member of the greatest rock band in the world that doesn't play music. And, I like that. Uh, uh, consistently uh, dysfunctional and, and, and loving and amazing. We have all our positives and negatives, and it's uh, uh, it's the dream of my life uh, to be a part of something like this. Although I never imagined it would be this. Yeah. You no. know what I mean? Uh, no. And you don't get this kind of support and uh, love on a dub show. Like this is yeah. the kind of love we get for a prelay show, like The Simpsons, or like you know some show that's you know has an original cast and we're where the dub cast have consistently been. So, and you know, we owe a lot to Funimation for that. We're again, Fukunaga, making sure we keep our cast consistent fundamentally and, and keep everything going. And, 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 and more so to the, the, the Japanese. The Japanese, especially. And the Japanese production company, especially Toy Animation, yeah. for being so supportive and creating this wonderful yeah. thing uh, that we're all enjoying here. So, definitely props to Toy. Uh, and, I don't, and I always like getting back to my, 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 I like think a lot about cause and effect, and my favorite thing to think about as a young guy. Kira Toriyama, he's just sitting in a room, he's going, I'm gonna draw a cartoon, I'm gonna draw this guy. And he draws another panel, and another, and he's just sitting there by himself in the 80s, you know? And then here we all are today. So that's kind of a mind-blowing thing in the power of art in general, and the power of a one man that can do, or one woman that can do that. Um, so, anyway, I don't know, that's kind of how I look at it, you know? Yeah. And it's it's fun to, I, I work at the building at Funimation, like my day job is at Funimation, I'm a producer, and so I, I, I get to see it from the ground up, like when there's just a rumor, when there's just a spark on the other side of the building and you start hearing about it, and then, and everybody doubts it, it's immediately like, oh, they're not going to make another series. I mean, it's, it'll probably just be like one thing, one movie, that's it. And then super happens, and it's, it, it really is, it's, even if you are not in the show, it is still an, and there's an energy about it. There's an energy that surrounds Dragon Ball Z within the building of Funimation. It's Everybody iconic. gets excited. I mean, it's amazing yeah. to be a part of something like that. And, and if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't have this job. So oh, yeah. thank you so oh, much yeah. for watching. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's always stressful to do conventions as an actor, but it's also the best part of my job. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a good stress. It's like, uh, I gotta meet people. I'm so nervous. But then when you're done, you're just like, okay, that was. You feel like you're doing something big. Yeah, it's 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 more fun than even playing Goku. I'll have to admit, because uh, it, it's really wonderful. You know, it's I don't know. It's it's, a, it's a, you can feel that big spirit bomb. You know, just floating around the room. You know, I, mean, I, I feel. I mean, when I sit next to Masako I on a panel, I could, when she channels the spirit of Goku, I swear I felt something. She just is like suddenly huger, and I'm like, whoa. And so that she has her own special energy that uh, I've had the privilege of being around a couple times. And we, I think, have created our own network of energy that I think you guys commune with us on that. So I'm just, I'm kind of riffing on what you, what you said. Sorry, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm feeling the love. So I'm just saying. Right that. there, right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's all, Thanks, it's all good. <laughs> and you're going back on the big screen. That's yes, we'll be a movie. There's going to be a new movie uh, at the end of the year. Uh, we don't know exactly no, when the dub release is going to be, but uh, that is in the works, from what I understand. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't know when the release is. I just know that, that we are going to do another movie. As, as a rule, I try not to know anything until I'm literally called to go into the session because I'm the worst actual liar in the history of liars. So I'm just like, I don't want to know, I don't want to know, I don't even want to tell me what it is. I'm just going to read my lines. <laughs> and also, I'm not in all the movies, so yeah. I may not be in it. I don't want to We just hope it goes on forever because seriously, this is in the energy. Like, we want to do this for years and years and years to come. I want my son sitting over there with you guys soon. Yeah. But I'll last, we'll do one more, one more. Make it good. Make it good. You got one more, brother. No pressure. First off, I want to say thank you guys for bringing the characters to life. Thank you so much for that. Uh, in your history of dubbing for Dragon Ball, what was your most favorite part? Like, what episode particular? Oh, I thought you asked the favorite part, because my favorite part was ring, ring. Hey, Sean, uh, this is Chris Evan at Foundation Productions. <laughs> We just want to let you know we're done casting for this new show, and uh, you're going to be Goku. Oh, really? You sure? Because I really thought I killed my Captain Ginyu audition. You sure I can't have Captain Ginyu?
in his part. Oh, trust me, you're gonna love playing this character. You're gonna love playing Goku. Didn't bother to tell me he was the lead in the show until two weeks into recording. But that was my favorite part of Dragon Ball. Was that day. It was in March of 99. Was it in March? It was in March we got caught. Yeah. I found out on my 30th birthday. March 3rd. March 3rd, okay. Yeah, and you did the movie. But then, <laughs> what he failed to tell me was, uh, you're not in very many episodes, so like, they didn't need me for three months, so I kept calling him once a month going, did I make it up? Did I just will it in <laughs> for real? Did I? Seriously, three times in a row, monthly, I'll call him and go, um, because usually when you get cast in something, you start. <laughs> yeah, usually. I almost lost Goten because I'd gone in and recorded. Um, I got cast. Well, I was originally cast as two kind of smaller characters, and I don't think I fully. I was so young. I think I was like 19, 20. I didn't really fully understand what was going on, and um, or get the scope of it. And uh, but I do remember when I got cast as Goten, I went in and recorded one or two episodes, because back then it took forever to record an episode, yeah. and um, and then I lost my voice, I got laryngitis for two weeks, and I actually had to have my doctor write a note, because this is like pre-cell phone, where I like drove to Funimation, and I'm like, I can't speak, and they were talking about recasting, and I was just like, please just let me heal, I will go home and not leave my house, and I will get healed, and oh yeah, and I kept it though. <laughs> and I'm like, tell you. I got to do Future Mai. That's I, I know Gohan is supposed to be my favorite moment. I love Gohan. I was so excited when I found out that I was going to get to actually join the cast because I thought it was done. Like, I thought I came into Funimation after the Dragon Ball Z thing happened. And, it, and even though I got these awesome roles, Luffy and Urza, and I was really excited about those, it was still like, I'll just never get to be a part of the flagship uh, property for Funimation. And so when I finally got to, that was awesome. Yeah. But I was so excited about Future Mai. <laughs> and I think it, it might just be that it's because it's new. Like, it's not it's not me taking over a role for somebody. It's, it's new stuff, new material that's coming out, and getting to voice that for the first time was, was really It's cool. great. Every time I hear it, I'm like, it's my favorite. So it's, I love that whole arc. It's, yeah. You're bringing it. Yeah. It's real. Love it. We good? Remember to... They'll be here all sick weekend. And I we'll not remember to take all your merch. Go visit them. Oh, yeah, we'll Thank be you guys for coming. This Thank you so awesome. much. It was amazing. You guys are wonderful. Give it up, standing ovation. Oh, you guys are